going to output voltage from 0 to 5 volts or to 3.3 volts whatever type of Arduino or power source that you have using this MPC 4725 we can enter the value in the serial monitor and send a command and whatever voltage we want we can generate up to the maximum voltage of Arduino the next project will be to convert pulse modulation to voltage 80 percent and let's go 50 40 how to use two of this so we can control two of this and out output two different voltages because that's our reference voltage so this way we can make volts and millivolts this time it shows volts let me increase it you can see the voltage here and here and decrease press fast change hi welcome to an arduino step-by-step -step course by robojax let's have a look at the specification of the module so what is this module this module converts digital value to analog voltage so you are getting so we are generating sine wave DC voltage or rectangular on it or any other type that you come up so that's why this is digital to analog converter and the resolution is 12 bits so these are the important facts that you have to know minimum maximum voltage minimum is 2.7 that's the operating voltage and maximum is 2.5.5 so this is the operating voltage and the output voltage so whatever operating voltage you connect you can get the maximum uh, up to the maximum value that you connect to and the resolution is 12 bits and it means 2 to the power 12 because this is binary so we go with 2 to the power 12 that's 4096 steps in terms of how many steps we have from 0 to 5 volts or whatever voltage you have so we have 0 to 4095 steps in total maximum output current that you can draw from the output from this pen is plus minus uh, 25 milliampere so keep that in mind it's very important and the resolution at 5 volt is 1.2 millivolts how we calculate it 5 volts divided by 4096 steps 1.2 millivolts what it means is at 5 volts the smallest value that you can output or get is 1.25 millivolts minimum value that we are getting 1 millivolts so at 3.3 volts it is 0 0.8 millivolts at the output so uh, for example 3.3 divided by 4096 is 0 0.8 millivolts so the lower the voltage the better the resolution that you get this is the module the actual chip is this small chip in here and this is the other side you will buy it with this pen header usually they include it I have soldered the pen header here on this module so we can just insert it on breadboard or connect your wires as you can see we have ground VCC this can be connected from 2.7 to 5.5 volts usually 3.3 or 5 volts but 2.7 also acceptable it will operate these two are for communication SDA and SCL for I square C this these two pins are for the output so you can get the output voltage based on the value that you set these are the paths that you can set the address so the middle pin you can connect it on this side you can get one address or you can connect it between these two paths and you will get the another address to get different addresses so you can use two modules at the same time Here is a data sheet for MCP4725. This is a 12-bit digital to analog converter with EEPROM memory, which you can write the value and read it, the last value. 
So it has 12 bit re resolution. Uh, and for us, external analog zero address pen, we can set single supply operation 2.7 to 5.5 uh, volts. Here, I forgot to mention rail to rail output. What it means is, whatever you have the maximum output, you can get the same maximum output. For example, if you connect 5.5 volts, we will get 5.5 volts at the output. Up to 5.5, we can generate current at the input pin, plus minus 2 milliampere it needs. Current at the supply pin, plus minus 50 milliampere it needs to operate. And this is the input pin. And here the pin names have been explained here. We have Vout, VSS is a ground pin. VDD is the supply voltage, and these are the I square C, and then we have one A0 that is to set the address. Here are some of the errors, for example, offset error. Offset error is that the voltage that it generates it offsets from zero. Integral non nonlinearity, so this is the formula, and for full scale error error. This is the formula V out minus V ideal divided by LSB. Output voltage is V reference times DN divided by 4096. That is 2 to the power 12. And in this case, V reference is equal VDD, whatever is the uh, voltage. And DN is the code that you enter out from 0 to 4096, whatever you plug in, multiply by this voltage and divide it, and it will give you the and it will give you the output voltage, which will be from zero to the two VDD, whatever value you have, the power supply of voltage. There is a wiring diagram for MCP4725 DAC. Let's start from the right pin. Ground is connected to ground. VCC is connected to 5 volts. You can also connect it to 3.3 volts or you can connect it to external source. But make sure to connect also ground to one of the ground if you are connecting it from external source. Then SDA is connected to A4 and SCL is connected to A5. The two output pins are ground and V out so you can use it wherever you want. I, for this illustration, I used a multimeter. And here is the wiring, so I've zoomed in so you can see it. We have A5 and A4 of Arduino. A5 is connected to SCL. And A4 is connected using this orange wire from A4 to SC SDA. Now, the first thing that we do is let's define and find out the, the I square C address for this one. This is called I, I2C scanner. So this is called I square C scanner. I will provide you the code. Don't worry how it works. Just upload the code to your Arduino while it is connected. And once it is completed, open the serial monitor and here as you can see it says the address is 0x6060 so if I disconnect the power you will see it says scanning but if I connect it again as you can see it found that device. I have another device that I've prepared and I've changed the I've changed the ITC address by soldering these pads. Instead of that side I've soldered it this side. Let me remove this and then insert it. Just wait. It will scan again and the address for this one is 61 the previous one was 60 so this way we can find the address using the i square c for this module now let me explain the code first we need to install the 
driver from Adafruit or whatever driver you like, click on sketch, include library, manage libraries, wait for this to complete and then you can type. And then here type MCP4725 and wait. Now the first you might get Adafruit. If it is not first, just pay attention. Adafruit MCP4725. You see it's installed. You will see the install button in here. Install it. And the other one is DF Robot also has it. And then for from Rob Tellart also I've installed it. So this is the one that we need. Install it. Wait for this to complete and close it. And here is the code. This line this line is for I2C communication. This is the library that we've just installed. Then we enter the reference voltage. This is 4530 millivolts or 4.53. So we enter it as millivolts. If your voltage is 3.3, .3, then you enter 3300 like that. Or whatever. This is from the class. We create an object called DAC or DAC. We are using it throughout the code. Do not change this. This is for our value. Inside the setup, we enter the I square C address that we just found using the uh, I2C scanner. So DAC.begin. So this was the object that we created. And inside the loop here is how we read it. Set millivolts. If you want to set the voltage based on millivolts, let's say you know you want 465 just put 465 and it will generate 465 and if you want to uh, and then this is just printing the value on the serial monitor this is the text and wait for five seconds and if you want to use volt let's say 2.6 volts or 2.635 just enter it in terms of volt and it will set the voltage. Both of these are doing exactly the same except it, I, I've made it very easy. I've wrote, written this function and this function so you can enter the value easily. And here set millivolt is here. Actual code was like this. It was not easy to use so I made it very easy from the library and this is the for volt. So don't worry just use this and uh, set whatever voltage you want up to maximum value of this you can set for the output. Before doing any demonstration make sure to measure the actual voltage. Do not rely the USB. This is 5 volts but let's see what we get here from this 5 volts pen. These are my wires that are connected to this multimeter. Uh, let me connect it to ground and 5 volts. And as you can see, 4.548. So we have to remember this. This is my voltage. Or if I connect it even to the reference pen, 4.548. So, and here is a demonstration of the first example. I've set the output voltage to 3.62. And as you can see, the serial monitor is just printing this with the V at the end with three decimal places. And here my multimeter is also showing this properly 3.616 or 3.615 so that's 3.62 if you round it. But here and let me uncomment this. In this case now we want to have 400 and 65 millivolts. When we use set MV then we enter millivolts and if we want set V and our voltage then we enter the value with the decimal point. Now this will print it and wait three seconds. Let's make it five seconds so we can have enough time for this and let me upload it. We will see the value first here.
So 465 millivolts for 5 seconds and then 3.6 volts. Let me show you the now 465, that's 463 and then 3.615 and 3.62. Now the voltage, this voltage depends on Arduino's voltage. My voltage is uh, 4.7 the 5 volt when let me show you that's the reference point so 4.7 the last pen if you measure it the same voltages at the other pen as well so let me show you the 5 volt pen Four point seven. So that is connected now to the five volts pen. Now, now this is now connected to five volts pen, and we are reading this voltage. Uh, this has not been resetted. Now let me reset it back. So three point six four, uh, four hundred sixty-five, and then three hundred sixty. So this is based on the value that we have now. Let's change the reference voltage here to 3.3 volts. For 3.3, we, we enter millivolts or 3,300 millivolts. Now, in this case, we cannot request 3.6. Let's make it 2.6. And now, uh, let's just enter also 4. Let's upload it. I'm now connecting it to 3.3 volts. This is now connected to 3.3 volts. And let's re reboot it so it can read it again. Now 463, 400, and then 2618, 2624. Let me hold it. So now it's holding. I'm not allowing it to change. So 2.661, now this is 6.8. If you round it, this will be 2.618 and that's 624. And that is the discrepancy that you are getting. Here is an example for generating triangular wave. I started with I with 0 and I smaller than reference voltage, which is 4,500 or something like that. So this goes every time I start with 0 and add 100, so it can be quickly. So this will generate one line like this, and this portion starts from large value to it goes to 0, it generates the next portion. Let's open this serial plotter. So this is first, if I... How can I stop it? So now I've just stopped it. This is the first loop from 0 to maximum, 4,500. And this is the second loop. It just generates that triangular wave at the output. So this is generating sine wave. If I click on File, Example, Adafruit, Library for MCP, Sine Wave. And then we have triangular. This is a sine wave. Let's upload it. Once the code is uploaded, go to Tools, and then Serial Plotter. 9600 so this is a plotter that is plotting the output signal for us
And as you can see, this is starting from zero. The value that, you, that is shown is the uh, bit value from zero to 4095 bits. And now we are going to see how we can send command from serial monitor to set the value. So in this case, we don't need to update the value in Arduino and upload the code. We can simply do it from serial monitor. In some application, you might need it. Let me explain the code where you can control the output voltage from serial monitor. This portion is exactly the same. So there is no specific setup except setting up the serial, uh, the I square C address. Using while we are checking if the value is available or is greater than zero. Then we use serial, serial parse int. So this will grab the integer, even if you have one, two, three, four digits, and we are saving it as a variable called millivolts entered. This is just a text to print it. You can comment this out if you don't want to print it. And here we check if the value is greater than zero. These two ampersand mean and millivolt entered is smaller than reference voltage. And update voltage is equal to true. So when you read the voltage, we set it to true then this will be true and then we set the voltage mv millivolt entered so this is just setting the output voltage and printing this text and we have two seconds delay you could remove it uh, this is for my test and we check if entered value is equal zero then we set output to zero and then we say update voltage to false so it will not come actually this might not be even necessary but this is as simple as that. It will control the output voltage. To read the voltage from this module, I'm, I'm going to display it here. And using my Hantec multimeter, the software is in here. So we can enter the value in the serial monitor and send the command. And whatever voltage we want, we can generate up to the maximum voltage of Arduino. So right now it is 1,995 or 1,900. So it's 2,000 as you can see. We are reading 1,946 or 95. So these two are different. Let's uh, let me set uh, one volt, 1,000. So I entered 1,000. So that's 940, 993. So both of these hardware are reading differently. And let's enter 50 millivolts. So that is 50. And we are reading 50 here and 41 there. Let's go 3.3 volts, so 3,300. Now it's generating 3.3 volts or 3.29. Set our maximum voltage in here. That's our reference voltage. And if you enter a value greater than this, my program will reject it. So let's say I'm going to enter 4,500. So 4,500, and here is the voltage. But if I enter 4,540, 4,540, it will not change it. To stop the output voltage, just enter 0. And the output would be zero, zero millivolts, and it will set it. So this can be useful in many applications, and you don't need to update the program or upload it via Arduino to do something. 
I've seen a lot of requests and need for converting pulse width modulation using Arduino to voltage. So we are we are going to con inject a pulse width modulation signal. We are reading with a ground and pin two, or from any other pin, and then I'm using the the MCP uh, four seven two five analog to digital converter. This is a twelve bit, which is very high, uh, which has very high resolution. We can read the voltage rail to rail, meaning whatever is your voltage from 2.7 to 5.5 volts. So for Arduino, let's say you use 5 volts or you want to use 3.3 volts, it can output from 0 to, uh, to the maximum that you have. If it is 3.3 volts, so the maximum that you can get is 3.3 volts. If you're using 5 volts or maybe just using another reference 5 volts, and you are, are doing a 3.3 volts, it will work fine. Just apply, instead of connecting it to this point, connect it to your source of 5 volts, and your Arduino might be 3.3 volts like Nano or other uh, type. So you can get from 0 to 5 volts based on the pulse width modulation signal. So what it means is that the pulse width modulation value that you set, for example, in here, the duty cycle, will be correspond to the voltage. For example, right now, this is 20%. 20% time is high and then the low, so 80%. So, so we are converting this value to voltage. And the voltage is uh, outputted from these two pins. You can do whatever you want, maybe control another device, uh, control a uh, voltage uh, power supply whatever you have for demonstration purpose I'm connecting it to this multimeter so we can read the voltage here uh, on this multimeter so you will need to just have this module available and connect it and that's it duty cycle will be 0 volts and 100% duty cycle would be 5 volts if your voltage is 5 volts. If your voltage is 3 volts, we can output with 100% duty cycle, 3.3 volts. Whatever voltage you have, you can set your maximum voltage and you can also, uh, based on the input, you can generate that voltage. Here is the code. First, we define pulse width modulation pin whichever pen you're reading, do not worry, we are getting the high time, low time, and the duty cycle. Based on that, we can get the duty cycle based on high and low, which will we get the period. So the first thing, we are setting the pen mode, pulse modulation pen as an input, and read duty cycle. This is a function that I have written. I was initially trying to use the interrupt, but this intra pin is not needed because it works perfectly. So let's explain this function first. Read duty cycle. So I have used this function called pulse n. This is just reading the input pulse of a pen. Either you want to read the high or the low when the pen is. So the, this will read the high time of the pen. When the signal goes high, it will read it and we are storing it in a high time. And then we use the same function again. This time we are reading the low time. So we have high and low. Now we can simply add these two. It will we'll give you the period and then high time divided by high and low. And then we are multiplying it by 100 to get the actual value with like percent and the value will be updated in here. So this code runs and updates it. After that, we know that we have the value, then we say high, low, and then duty cycle, and it will print percent at the end. Program for password modulation to voltage converter. This portion is exactly the same as main setup except you have a function generator or whatever source that you have that is generating, for example, this is a function generator with square wave, one kilohertz, 65% percent pulse modulation. This is just an example. So you connect the common or ground to ground, and then the output 
to pen 2. If you're defining other pen in the code, just connect it to that pen. And the output will be based on the frequency at these two pens. And here is the wiring for password modulation to uh, voltage. This portion has not changed. This is exactly the same. The only thing that I've added is added this uh, signal source of pulses modulation to pin 0 and a pin ground and pin 2. And if you are using Arduino Mega or any other Arduino, just define your pin, digital pin, it will work fine. And here is a demonstration. I've connected pulse modulation to pin 2. The module is converting the voltage. Here is my multimeter and also I'm showing it on the screen. I'm showing it also on the screen and here uh, you will see also the function generator in here. Now we are at 40% and that's the voltage that we are getting. So mm, let me show you this. Uh, now that's a 40% and the voltage that is reading is converted in here. Now if I change it, let me change it to Now 45%, the voltage has changed, and you can see here the converted value. If you want to see it in here, let me just change it so you can see. That's around 57%, or yeah, 56%. Let's make it 50. So 50% 50 is ar getting around 2.5 volts, as you can see. The reason for that is because the voltage difference is 4.5 volts, not exactly 5 volts. And here, let me go. So now we are at 80% as you can see and we are getting 3.3 volts at the output and if I disconnect it here with the ground it will be zero. So now we are reading proper voltage. So that is 80% and let's go 50, 40, 22 and 20%. So that's 935 millivolts we are getting. Here is a wiring diagram for two modules. The portion that connects to Arduino is exactly the same. And from the first pin I've, I've used here one wire connected to the ground. From the second one another green is connected to VCC. And then from SDA a yellow wire is connected to SDA. SCL is connected using the orange wire to the SCL. And then the output is connected to another source wherever you want to use that voltage. Now let me connect the second module that I've already prepared. If you pay attention here, you will see that this, is, this one is connected on this side. And for this one, two, three paths, I've connected the left one. Here the left is not soldered. The two right side have been soldered. So by default this is the original one that was coming. So that was how it is. And now here 
I'm gonna connect it, just insert it. First, let's get a pair of wires. What I'm gonna do is this is for the signal from SDA and SCL from these two pins. Bring it to this. This is just parallel. So here now SDA is connected to SDA using this orange wire and the same way for SCL now for power I'm gonna get these two this is po positive that's negative from this point I'm gonna bring it to these two pins here which are labeled as VCC and ground And here, this is now connected. The power is also connected. Green on this side, on the left side, is green on the left side. Blue on the right side is blue on the right side to ground. Now this is connected. And here, the, now I'm going to test for the dual modules. I've entered my voltage. The reference voltage which I measured and here set Vm1 that is for millivolts set millivolt 1 for the first module I want 1353 millivolts and for the second one we want 2.6 to 4 volts could have been loaded and as you can see 1351 is for the first module and the I can disconnect it and connect it to the first module to the second one two point six one five instead of two point six two four I'm reading perhaps my Arduino so voltage is not trustworthy it's fluctuating because that's our reference voltage this way we can use two devices simultaneously and now in this project we are setting the output voltage using these push buttons either quick or simple and display the voltage in here of course the output voltage is measurable by multimeter as i have shown you before And here is the wiring diagram for MCP4725 with three push buttons and LCD. This portion of the uh, DAC converter is exactly the same. I'm not going to go through that. But for the LCD, we have ground. Ground is connected to the ground line on the breadboard. VCC is connected to the VCC. We have SDA and SCL. The last pin is, as you can see, SCL. SCL is connected to the last pin here. It is labeled as SDA and SCL. And here, SDA and SCL. And for the push, so these three wires, the four wire, this is connected to the ground from this ground I've connected it to this point where the left pin of this push button is connected to the ground and then the left pin of this one so the three push buttons the left side is connected to the ground via this blue wire this from this right side of each I've taken one wire you see this portion and this portion this goes to pin two three and four respectively and here the wiring the same way I've put here wire to the left side and from here to here to the left side I use this long pen push button these are sold on eBay Amazon I will try to put the link below this video if you want to purchase it and here on this side 
One is connected to ground, the other one is connected to two, three, and four. Now let me explain the code. You need to install this liquid crystal underscore I2C library. I will provide you the zip file, download it and save it, save it in your computer, then go to sketch, include library, add .zip library, and then point it to where you have saved it. For example, if that was inside this hangs or whatever it is, just select that zip wherever you saved it and click open and it will be done. So we are setting 16 characters for the display and two rows and we are defining three pins for the push button. Push button pin 1, 2, 3. So pin 2, 3 and 4 is used for this purpose. Here we select the increment every time you press the push button the value will increase so this is the value if you want it 1 millivolts set it to 1 if you want 5 or 20 or whatever and this is fast increment this is 100 you can put it 200 300 so uh, this is this button when you press it hold it with other push buttons it will uh, fast forward uh, faster if you don't press this it will be just by the value that you set and this is a fast increment do not touch these values here we set the i square c address for the lcd exactly the same way as before you run the i2c scanner again in here also we enter the address for the this portion is initializing this LCD and printing some text. And this text is coming from here, including the voltage. This is coming from this portion. Then this checks the push button. This code this is a function that checks if push buttons have been pressed. This was from previous code that you print exactly all the functions and features are working. I've just commented them out. And here we check if value have been updated, then print the voltage on the LCD. And then we set the voltage for whatever value of millivolts we have, it will set it. Here, if you want to show volt, set this to true. It will print the value in terms of volts. Something like this, volt. But if you want to set it, if you want to set, get millivolts, just set it to false. And here is a demonstration. I've connected this multimeter now reading it here. And here is a demonstration. I'm using these push buttons to update the value quickly. As you can see, the voltage is now 1396. We are reading that's millivolt 1393. So using this push button, I'm just in incrementing it. As you can see, I incremented it and we saw it. So 1.6, I can go down. This value, if it is slow, then we can press this button, either go increment or decrement. So this is for fast increment or decrement. Let me press it and go very fast. So 96, 97 millivolts, and if I hold it and press it, it goes very quick to the maximum voltage, or quickly come here, and then let's say you want to set it to 3.5, so just decrement, 
so that's 3.5 and we are reading 3.5 here 3.49 and here I have added volts and millivolts this time it shows volts let me increase it you can see the voltage here and here and decrease press fast change works thank you for watching this was how to use this analog to digital converter mpc4725 12 bits converter and also converting uh, pulses modulation to voltage if you found this useful please thumb up and also subscribe i really appreciate it in this lecture we are going to learn how to control position of servo motor either this metal gear or small servo any type of servo that you have using rotary encoder either this PCB version or this type that you wire and attach some resistors so when we rotate it we control the servo motor and also display the angle on the LCD